Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to tell you if this game's through time and bandwidth. Today's game is Forspoken. Memed to death for its dialogue and trailer, Forspoken came and went. I finally decided to give it a shot over a year later, because I want to know, was the hate warranted? Let's find out. Forspoken is an open world game in the style of the Ubisoft Objective Marker Fair, but with an emphasis on both its traversal kit and third person shooting slash magic system. You play as Frey, a down on her luck New Yorker who is whisked away to a magical land by putting on a talking bracelet. Once there, she discovers the realm is in turmoil, and it's four leaders basically being giant bastards, making Frey's only chance of getting home to take him out. The world building here is actually pretty okay, but while the world was interesting, I personally found the story a bit unengaging. The open world itself is pretty uninspired also, at least at first glance. You have your usual objective markers everywhere that contain small things to do for minor upgrades, such as shrines to pray at, demon cats to sneak up on, enemy forts to clear, and challenge labyrinths to delve into. While these aren't exactly original, getting to them ties into the game's parkour system and is one of the game's highlights. Frey essentially has a parkour button, and as you kill leaders, and get more powers, you'll gain more moves like a grapple, wall hopping, water running, teleporting around, and more. Combat is also fairly decent once you understand the parkour. You'll get four magic sets, each with three primary fires to swap from, and a bunch of skills on cooldown, as well as the ability to switch between sets mid-combo. Most are third-person shooty, but there's one that's melee, and the abilities all augment each toolkit. Basically, you'll feel extremely powerful very quickly, which is quite satisfying. Progression-wise, you gain mana, which is basically skill points to unlock new magic, and each skill has an associated challenge, and once you complete it, that skill gets powered up indefinitely. You can also equip nails, a bracelet, and a cloak, which can be further augmented in the crafting system. It's not a ton of diversity to be honest, but it is progression. And that's really forespoken. It's a third-person parkour shooter with a big open world and a lot of particle effects because it's a next-gen game. So what did I like about forespoken? Well, once you unlock more of your kit, the combat and traversal becomes quite engaging, with you having a massive amount of moves paired with some insane mobility options that leads to you just dancing over foes as you obliterate them with multi-elemental destruction. And speaking of that, traversal and this game feels phenomenal once you get the hang of it. You basically can magic parkour all over the place, and as you get new stuff, your climbing and speed only improve. When I play these big open worlds, the one thing I want is to be able to move across them quickly, and Forspoken does that quite well. And lastly, the loop around its systems can be addicting, especially doing those small ability-themed challenges to upgrade them. People keep making this style of game for a reason, and it's because they're addicting, as there's always just one more thing that you can do, and thanks to your high mobility, getting from place to place is never boring. When it comes to the bad, my main beef with Forspoken is how long it takes for you to get enough of a kit that the traversal and combat really shine. The first boss is several hours in, and she gives you the grapple and a whole new set of moves, which really opens the game up, so why did they not lead with the good stuff? Additionally, the large amount of small interactions interactions and upgrades learned throughout the map don't feel worth it, and there's nothing in between them to make the game particularly engaging. You have so many awesome traversal tools and combat abilities, but it's in service of a world and enemies that only sometimes require you to master and use them. And lastly, while the dialogue as mentioned isn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be, I didn't really gel with Frey and her isekai adventure. She's kind of insufferable for most of the story, and her character progression is mostly cliches and happens near the end, making the whole thing feel completely by the numbers and bland. I also really wish Cuff would just shut up. As you know, I reckon on a three-point scale, must play, maybe consider, and don't bother. And I went into Forspoken fully aware that the internet had ripped it apart, but I was determined to experience it with as little bias as possible. And if I'm being honest, after the pretty awful beginning portions, I ended up enjoying Forspoken quite a bit. It isn't nearly as bad a game as the internet would lead you to believe. In fact, it has some genuinely cool ideas and fun moments. But all these are in spite of the game's bog standard and bland Ubisoft open world and mediocre writing. I do think if you enjoy power fantasy open worlds, specifically like Prototype or Infamous, then Forspoken might be worth checking out on sale. But if you can't stand the copy-paste of the Ubisoft objective marker design, Forspoken doesn't offer enough beyond that for me to recommend. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Did you play Forspoken? Did this review change your mind on it at all? Please let me know what you think about it in the comments. But regardless, go out there and maybe give it a look on sale.